What's going on? So last night I watched ABC's 2020, and it was Growing Up Butterfuco. And my thoughts and reactions were, <laughs> where do I start? Train wreck 101. I remember Long Island Lolita like it was yesterday with Amy Fisher and Joey Butterfuco and, and his ex-wife Mary Jo. And then the daughter's in on it now. And I'm like, when did y'all, first of all, I can't stand the Kardashians. But the Kardashians got a name. They actually are known for the most part for stuff on the positive side a little bit, if you will, even though they shame the self promoters and I can't stand them. But to see grown up but a Fuko, and I'm like, this was a severe case of a whack job. This ain't exactly like people have been sitting around like, oh, I wonder how they turn out all this. Now granted, hard copy, current affair. All those shows back then, Geraldo Revere, etc. Precursor to TMZ, what you got today. And if you could do the talk show circuit early 90s, you blew all this up. You know, tabloid TV for your eyes. However, the tragedy of the whole shooting and everything that explored, did they, in the narrative last night, they made this seem like, oh, wow, this is like Kardashians or the Hiltons or a grown up hip hop or something. It was like this, like, oh, oh. Um, cracks me up. Cause you got what I consider like trailer park Italian folks. And I see it like that. Because Guido's in the round in the burbs. But it just shows you something. Just cause you're silver spoon in your mouth and et cetera, et cetera, does not mean that you have any class or tact. As a matter of fact, Joey Butterfuco. I can see him hanging out playing cards with Trump or golfing because it's cut from the same cloth. And the narcissistic, self-centered era has not ended. He still sounds just like he did, just a little older now, but sounds just like he did back in the day. And Amy was exploiting her game, selling herself online in various ways. The daughter was like, like, are you for real? I mean, like, yes, love your parents are cool with that. But how you, you know, you turn this into like, oh, wow, this is what happened here. And this is what happened there. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, no, no, this was pretty extreme. It's not every day that you're in a, a suburban white neighborhood and you get capped at the door like that. And to sit there and, you know, I mean, it's a lot of psychological trauma. In respect to the son, he wants no parts of the name or anything to do with that whole nine. And I can't blame him. Because it was a train wreck and a half watching it. Sat there, watched that thing, and I was like, oh, you really for real with this? I mean, it seemed like they was trying to pitch a show to Netflix or Hulu or YouTube or somebody's tube. You know, because I'm like, if you see them on Facebook or something, you see them somewhere, somewhere, trying to know, on Instagram, they're trying to get likes, all kinds of things. I don't know what, I mean, it was like really bizarre and odd. The severity of the show. And then almost like the glib and the, oh, yeah, and you know, and just when you thought it was over. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, people back in the day, and there's still some who still, but y'all you know, ain't the Kardashians. This ain't, you know, it ain't like, oh, people watched you evolve. Like, oh, we, you know, we're wondering. Your story was one of the most top 10 stories back in the day. It's right there with the Lorena Bobbitt, John Wayne Bobbitt situation. And, um, you know, around that time period, Tanya Hart and Nancy Kerrigan, around that time. I'll give you that. I'll say it was a top tenner for the early 90s scandals and situations. But to sit up here and act like y'all, somebody, like people are like, oh, well, we wonder and all that. Feel for what Mary J getting shot and all that. But I can't feel for her. I don't feel for, I don't feel for her in the sense that she allowed her daughter sit there and narrative and all this glibness. I mean, come on now. And of course, Joey... He said that lie left or right, but he loved the camera. He loved the attention. And this is what you get. You know, part of watching this show reminded me of the Victoria Gotti show, too, on A&E with all the, like I said before, you can have money and be in the burbs, but you can't buy no class and you can't buy no tack. You just can't. Being trailer park is trailer park. And that's how I left watching this mess. 
but it was a train wreck you were going to see it to believe <laughs> believe that. So anyway, that's my take on Grown Up Butterfuko, which was on 2020 last night. Give me your thoughts, your takes. What do you remember about the whole saga, the whole thing? I'm looking forward to feedback on this. Have a good day.